Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the two sample t test and some graphs that you might consider using to go along with that. And I have a data set that's actually based on a true story, but the numbers are, uh, are mine. I generated them up. I wanted to have a smaller sample size. But anyway, I'm going to have two samples of size 20. And what we're looking at is at the beginning of the year, uh, teachers and students were given information that said that these 20 students, they were randomly assigned to the group, that these 20 students were of high potential and that the other 20 students were identified as not having uh, as high potential. We'll call them low potential in this study. And the response variable was how much the IQ for those students went up over the course of the year. Um, the idea being that maybe if you were identified as high potential, the teacher might spend more attention um, to you, you might yourself have higher expectations for yourself and study more and see if that, what impact that had. So I'm just going to read the data in from uh, a website and I'm going to go ahead and attach that and do a summary. And you can see there's this average gain is around 19, uh, 19 and a half, depending on whether you use the mean or the median. And you can do the structure of the thing if you want to. And you can see that the IQ gain is an interval measured variable. And there's just the first few scores. And that the potential is a factor or categorical variable with two levels, high and low. And so the next thing I have here, these next five statements, are just to get various statistics for IQ gain by group. So for example, the first one here just tells me that there are 20 observations in each group then the means are 27.15 and 11.95, the standard deviations, the median, and the interquartile range. If you're watching for this for the first time, it might be worth your while to write uh, some of those numbers down, especially the means and the standard deviations. And you can pause and do that if you'd like. OK, so uh, the next, first thing I'm going to do is do a, uh, a density plot. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to have the package SM, which if you don't have, already have it installed, you can go over to packages and install the package SM. And then within that package, there is a command SM density compare, which will draw a, DOS, uh, which will draw a density plot for IQ gain, but for each group. And so you'll get something that looks like that. I didn't find this as directly editable as some of the uh, graphs and base are, but there were some things I could edit it, edit uh, with it. And so uh, I specified my own colors here. I made the LWD will make the lines thicker, and then I specified the level, the kinds of dashing that I wanted. You can see here, the, this one has one kind of dashing, and this is solid. I did a little bit different than that. And then I'm going to add some text to identify which curve is low potential and which is high potential. I mean, you can tell by looking at it. If you looked at the means and everything, that the one, that this one, is the low potential. It has an average close to zero. I think the median was 2.5. And that the red one is the uh, uh, reverse of the students who are identified as high potential. It looks like their average is somewhere around 20. Uh, and then I couldn't give it a title in a normal way. I'm just uh, up in the density thing. I couldn't put comedy ma comma main equal. I had to make a separate statement here for, uh, for title, and you can see how I did that right there. And this is what I ended up with. There may be a way to get rid of the y-axis, but at least in the few minutes I devoted to it, I didn't um, see that there. And this, this looked pretty good to me. And you can see then, the same as I said before, that the high potential is to the right. It's going to have higher IQ gains than those who were identified as low potential. So the next thing I have is a box plot IQ gain by groups. It's a tilde potential. Frame plot equal false. Been watching my videos, you know what that means. It's going to just take the box away from the frame. Box wex changes the um, well, width of the box. And then I'm specifying colors royal blue two and light green giving it a title. Those backslash ends just tell you I want the title to start on a new line. You can see on the plot that I had, 
had over here, instead of having performance by individuals identified, having all that on one line, I've broken it up into three. So I'm doing the same thing on the uh, box plot here. And I'm giving it X and Y labels and um, going to make it horizontal. And the LAS equal one uh, on the Y axis, this would be true for a box plot as well. It'll change the number, the orientation of the number so they're easier to read. And then I've added some text here for the mean and the uh, standard deviation for each group. Um, and you can see here on the, on the uh, third line of text here, I'm late, the mean was 14 point, uh, actually, thought I'd fixed this already, but the um, mean for the first group was 27.15, and I'm going to, I had to play around with uh, where I put Y. I'll just do this first part here, and you'll see a little bit more about it here. I'm like this, and I want to have text come where uh, the mean is 27.15, and 1 1.4, I'll show you where that ends up being is ab above, so the, this is going to be 1, and the middle of the second box is going to be 2. And you really do just have to, it's just a trial and error to get it in the right place. So now the next thing I'm going to say, text at 27.15, in other words, I want it to line up with this text, and be just slightly below it at 1.3, but, but I'm going to report the standard deviation of 12.51 there. So uh, I'll go ahead and show that. That's just because I included that in there. So now for uh, the next one, 14.61 was the uh, mean for, uh, for the low potential group. I'm going to go at 1.75, just below that, and it should have been 14.61 right there. And put that. And then I'm going to put the... Uh, uh, standard deviation there. Let me go back up here and look what was that standard deviation was. Actually, it was 14.65. So I actually come back here. Oh, I see. I got it fixed in the part below, but not here. Uh, that actually should have been 11.95 and 11.95. Because that was the mean of the low potential. And I'm going to line the text up at 11.5.95. But the standard deviation actually was 14.61. So I've got that right in there. And I'm just going to highlight all of that. And this is exactly how I trial and error. I put some numbers in. Uh, then just have a look. See what it looks like. And that looks okay. And then below, and this is the part I'd already, I think, done. I had that text, and I also added the medians. And then I added some text to say, uh, to label the boxes as being um, what they, as high potential or low potential. And then I used the yaxt equal n up here, line 38, to take away the axis, the axis that is there. And that's just to make it, I think, look a little cleaner. And there's a little bit of an art to this. You may have uh, a little bit different than what I have there, but I, I think that looks pretty good to me. And that's something I would feel comfortable putting out there. Finally, now we'll get to the t-test. And so I will run, it's a IQ gain tilde potential. That's response variable tilde the two category Explanatory, explanatory variable. The alternative is greater. And so you can see that we have a t-test of 3.53 with 37, always round that down, 37 degrees of freedom, and a p-value of 0 0.0005578. So just looking at the p-value, we know we're less than 0 0.05, so assuming that we did have a significant level of 0 0.05, or even 0 0.01 for that matter, we would have a statistically significant difference. We can verify that with the uh, t-table, and you can see I've gone one-tailed test 05, 
and down to 37 degrees of freedom, and the number there is 1.687. So we would reject HO if the t-test was greater than 1.687. It's 3.5341, which is greater than 1.687, so we will reject HO. And since we did a one-sided test, it's giving us a one-sided confidence interval here. And I've seen a couple of textbooks that use those, but most of us use one, two-sided confidence intervals. And certainly if you were going to do this without respect to a particular hypothesis, you want to have a two-sided interval to, to say where you think the uh, population mean is or within what range you are confident that the population mean exists. So I'll, do, I'll rerun the t-test, this time IQ game by potential, I don't put the alternative equal greater than. I'm going to put the confidence interval equal 90 because with a one-tailed test, we had 05 and one tail. And so I'm giving the same 05 and the other tail. So to uh, make it come out uh, to be the same. And you'll see if we, well, I guess I'll remind you that if we had done a uh, 90% confidence interval and 37 degrees of freedom, of course, we'll get the 1.687. If we had left it at 95, we would be using a different number, and it wouldn't line up exactly with our one-tailed test, which I, I do want it to do. So this would be then the 90, well, I, did I not? Hmm. Okay, I knew that didn't look right. It wasn't, I had not done that last state right. It should be conf.level equal 0 0.9. It has to be between 0 and 1. And that's not confidence int, what I had there. I just remembered it wrong. And so when you do that, you will get a 90% confidence interval, 7.94 to 22. Uh, about 46. The other thing we want to do is get the uh, effect size, and you could just compute the effect size with, with R. You could either write a formula out for yourself here, or there are a, a couple of functions that'll do it. I find them a little um, unwieldy to deal with. So I, and I guess maybe also, I just happen to like the uh, calculator at this website, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, that's not the one. Here we go. This is it. And so all I've done is, I'm not going to reset it here. Um, I put the mean and the standard deviation the sample size for group one, and the mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size for size two. And then I'll hit compute. When you first put that in, this results won't be um, in. But once you hit compute, you have those numbers in and hit compute, you'll come out and you can see that the Cohen's D is 1.1. To about 1.12. And you know that's a large effect, but there's also, maybe this is why I, I like it, is that if you come down here, they have this uh, result whacker here thing. And if you remember that that Cohen's D is 1.12, you can just go here and put 1.12. And you can see if you had correlational data, you could put a, uh, a correlation in there as well. And so we'll just Give it a smack there, and you'll see that it's a large effect. Okay, so maybe I'm easily amused. 